you know, uh, ask, ask, translate the question. You know, is there a more specific time frame or a date by which we can see uh, the accelerated movement of cargo? We're talking about accelerating. We're talking about accelerating. Uh, and so uh, I think the first milestone really starts with Monday when the president signs the measure. The ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles and ports around the country know that relief is on the way and they can count on those resources and kickstart whether it's the planning process, land acquisition, all the things they need to do to modernize and improve the logistics of their uh, facilities specifically. Uh, and earlier this week, President Biden at a port in Baltimore uh, made uh, announcements of further accelerating some of that funding going out uh, so that uh, we benefit from the investments sooner rather than later. So I do think it's a matter of months, not a matter of years, where we'll begin to uh, benefit from these historic investments. Y sí, en español. Uh, uh, yo creo que es solo cuestión de meses, no años, cuando vamos a ver los mejoramientos en los puertos de Long Beach, Los Ángeles, en todas las áreas del uh, país. El primer paso es este lunes que viene, cuando el presidente va a firmar el proyecto de ley uh, que va a entregar un nivel de inversión histórico para los puertos de nuestro país. Uh, el presidente también hizo un anuncio esta semana, el martes, uh, en el puerto de Baltimore. Uh, cuando se aprueban los, los fondos, hay modos de acelerar la entrega de esos uh, fondos a los estados, a los puertos uh, del país. Y los puertos ya tienen sus planes, ya tienen los proyectos en mente. Cuando saben que pueden contar con ese fondo, esos fondos que van a abrir, pueden seguir con, uh, 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 consiguiendo uh, más terreno para poder ampliar los otros proyectos que ya tienen en mente para modernizar los puertos. Gracias. Next question. All right. Last question here. Okay, well, and we'll take this as the last question. It's not exactly shipping related, but yes, uh, the, the recent also, no, I hear. Right. No, I mean the movement of cargo, the, the, the theme of today, I should say, sorry, yes. I know that's one of the theories. <laughs> So, uh, yes, I was out here uh, just uh, several weeks ago, as you recall, uh, taking a tour of the recent oil spill uh, off the coast of uh, Huntington Beach. Um, the, the cleanup uh, seemed to be a tremendous success. Uh, when I was here, we heard the state attorney general open an investigation. So you now have uh, federal and state and some local investigations that are ongoing uh, to uh, get to the root cause of the issue. So I don't want to get ahead of those investigations and any discipline or accountability that will come from those. I do think the fact that we're able to anchor ships further offshore is really a win-win, right? It's not just the uh, air quality, environmental impacts of some of the surrounding communities that will benefit by any emissions coming from those ships that are waiting to come into port uh, being further away, uh, but also any uh, danger or risk associated with anchors, uh, uh, oil production infrastructure that's uh, underwater right now, uh, it should uh, hopefully prevent some of those concerns as well. No, I think, uh, we, again, we, we, with the planning and information technology that exists already, uh, when uh, the port is almost ready for yet another ship to come in, the word goes out to uh, you know, in, in a proper time so that it doesn't slow operations down here, just keeps it safer for everybody. Congresswoman. Um, I, I just want to, um, I just want to remind everybody that our infrastructure has been broken. We haven't invested in infrastructure in a very long time. And so when you talk about COVID and what was happening during COVID, we had warehouses in Asia starting to shut down, um, that's when the supply chain issues really started because of the pandemic and because of COVID. And so what we have been left with, uh, with the Biden administration on day one, said we are going to have to invest in infrastructure. We've got to get this done so that we can get the supply chain moving like it should be. And so these investments in the infrastructure bill are meant to get that supply chain moving faster, whether it's rail and updating that infrastructure and it's moving goods, which is why it's so important. And so I just want to remind people that 
Uh, this is something that started during the pandemic because of the situation and because of our lack of investment in infrastructure for so, so very long. And so thanks to the president stepping in and saying we are going to start 24-7 operations. And thanks to this president who said we are going to work to get back to make sure we pass this infrastructure bill is why we're able to look forward into seeing the progress that, uh, that we're gonna make and that I believe is gonna make a difference. The last thing I wanna quickly mention is that President Biden um, has directed the Federal Trade Commission uh, to strike back at those that are price gouging and pandemic profiteering while the administration continues to work to lower energy prices. So these are things that are being addressed by this administration, things that we support. And with that, I just wanna to thank everybody again today for their participation. Thank you, Congresswoman. I'll just say this in, in closing uh, to, to reiterate her point. The, the multiple factors that led to the, uh, uh, the congestion we saw several weeks ago uh, were unprecedented, right? We're just still less than two years into the COVID-19 pandemic. We saw what the impact of COVID was last year between the, the shelter at home orders, uh, the impact to manufacturing abroad and therefore uh, imports, let alone exports. This year, last several months, you know, production came raging back. This year, the economy came raging back. Demand has come raging back. So it's been a spike back up in goods that are trying to not just come into the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, but really around the world. Yet, and this is the biggest point of today, the capacity let on the quality and age of our infrastructure has not been significantly invested in in generations. And so it shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody that, yeah, we had a, a, ch a choke point here not that long ago. But we're moving, where everybody's been flexible from the shippers and retailers and the workforce, uh, elected leaders, to get the, the goods moving at this critical time period. And the point is, how do we learn from this to better prepare for the future? How do we build better ramp up capacity from an infrastructure standpoint, from a workforce standpoint, uh, so should similar conditions create a spike in the future, we're better prepared to handle it. But uh, things are getting better, things will continue to get better, and uh, we're investing uh, significantly for longer term into the future. Thank you all for coming this morning. Stay safe.